Narada said, O Brahma, O sinless and intelligent one, you have splendidly narrated the story of Shiva and Shiva. My life has been sanctified. This is conducive to my benefit. Now please tell me, what was the boon that Daksha, with steady sacred rites and austere penance, secured from the goddess, and how she became Daksha's daughter? Brahma said, O Narada, listen. You are blessed. You are revered by all sages with devotion. Hear how, with good sacred rites, Daksha performed penance and secured boons. At my bidding, intelligent Daksha, the great chief, controlled his mind and went to worship the goddess, the mother of the universe, with that cherished desire. He went to the northern shore of the ocean of milk and began to perform the penance, keeping the mother of the universe in his heart. He wished to see the goddess in person. For three thousand divine years he performed the penance with good sacred rites, controlling his mind and keeping himself pure. For some years he sustained himself on taking in only air, abstaining from food, and for some years taking only water, and for some years taking only leaves as food. Thus he spent the time meditating upon the goddess in cosmic form. He was intensively devoted to the meditation of the goddess. He was engaged in the penance for a long time. With sacred rites and various restraints, he worshipped the goddess. O oh, excellent sage, then Shiva appeared in person to Daksha, who maintained all restraints, yama, etc., and worshipped the mother of the universe. On seeing the mother of the universe, cosmic in form, Daksha, the lord of the subjects, considered himself well rewarded. With various sorts of prayer, he eulogized and bowed to the goddess mother of the universe, Kalika, seated on a lion, dark-complexioned, with four arms and beautiful face, the bestower of the boon, the abode of safety, holding a blue lotus and the sword in her hands, comely with reddish eyes and with beautiful disheveled hair. Daksha said, Obeisance to thee, O great goddess, mother of the universe, wielding the great illusion, the ruler of the universe. It is with great favor that thou showed thy own body to me. Be pleased, O primordial goddess, be pleased, O goddess in the form of Shiva. Be pleased, O bestower of boons to the devotees. Obeisance be to thee, O wielder of illusion over the universe. Brahma said, O sage, thus eulogized by Daksha of purified soul, the goddess spoke to Daksha, although she knew what his desire was. The goddess said, O Daksha, I am very much delighted by your great devotion. Choose a boon according to your desire. There is nothing which shall not be granted to you. Brahma said, on hearing the words of the mother of the universe, Daksha Prajapati was very happy, and he said to Shiva, after bowing to her frequently, O wielder of great illusion, O mother of the universe, if you wish to grant me any boon, please listen to my words with pleasure. Be pleased to fulfill my desire. My lord and master Shiva, has manifested himself as Brahma's son in the name of Rudra. He is the perfect and full-fledged incarnation of the Supreme Soul. You have not so far incarnated. Who will be his wife? Hence, O Shiva, take an incarnation on the earth and fascinate the great Lord. Excepting you, no other lady will ever be competent to enthrall him. Hence, be born as my daughter and become Shiva's consort. Exhibiting your divine sports, O goddess, you be the enchantress of Shiva. This is the only boon I crave of you. I speak out the truth to you. This fulfills my own interests. 
Indeed, it fulfills the interests of all the worlds, as well as those of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Hence, I have been induced by Brahma in this direction. Brahma said, On hearing these words of Daksha, the mother of the universe replied smilingly after thinking of Shiva. Dear one, O Daksha Prajapati, listen to my weighty words. I tell you the truth. I am much delighted by your devotion. I shall now bestow everything. Subservient to your devotion, O Daksha, I, the great goddess, shall be born of your wife as your daughter. There is no doubt in this. O sinless one, I shall perform a penance strenuously and shall become Shiva's wife after I have secured a boon from him to that effect. Otherwise, there is no chance of the fulfillment of the object. The Lord is free from all aberrations. He is the full incarnation of Sada Shiva, worthy of being served by Brahma and Vishnu. I am his slave forever, his beloved in every birth, incarnation. Shiva, who manifests himself in many forms, is indeed my master. It was by his favor that he manifested through the eyebrows of Brahma. I too shall incarnate by his favor and at his bidding. O oh, dear one, go back to your residence. I have known my mission. Born as your daughter, ere long I shall be Shiva's wife. Having spoken these splendid words, she sought and obtained Shiva's permission through mental communication. While thinking on Shiva's lotus-like feet, the goddess spoke as follows. But, O Prajapati, you have to take a vow. It is a precondition. I shall tell you. It is true, never false. Please understand. If in future you would be disrespectful to me, I will cast off my body. I shall withdraw myself to my soul or take to another form. It is true. O oh, Daksha, this boon has been granted to you. At every creation I shall be born as your daughter and become the beloved of Shiva. Brahma said, After speaking thus to Daksha, the chief Prajapati, the great goddess immediately vanished, even as Daksha was watching. When she had vanished, Daksha returned to his hermitage. He rejoiced because he knew that the great goddess would become his daughter. <laughs>